Once we're signed into Scratch, we can start creating a project by hitting the Create button in the top left corner. And once we have that, you might get this uh, yellow bar up here that says Confirm Your Email, which you can do and which you should do if you want to share your projects and allow your projects to be uh, searchable uh, through the Scratch platform. But if not, you don't have to, and you could just hit this uh, X here. All right, so we have our screen on the left side. We have one character on the screen. It's our scratch cat. We have our blocks, coding blocks, which are categorized by colors and by uh, groups, like all the blocks that have to do with the motion are here in the blue motion blocks. All the blocks that have to do with how the cat looks are here in the purple blocks, and we have the sound effects all done here, and we have events and controls. It might seem very overwhelming to you now, but you're going to learn how these blocks work one at a time, and it's going to be fun, and by the end of the process, you should be an expert in Scratch and a budding programmer. So the way that uh, we're going to start off this lesson is I'm going to show you a very quick uh, lesson and then you're going to jump from here and go and start the lesson that is on CS first. So um, here's my cat and let's say I want to make a, uh, a animation, a story with my cat. Okay. Um, well, first thing I want to do is I want to pick background because the background is white. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is right down here in the bottom left corner, uh, we have the stage. The stage is the background. And we can click the first button, which will choose a background from the library that's pre-built on the Scratch platform. We can hit the second button, which is one where we can draw mountains in the background if we wanted to. Right. Um, I do not, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, we can hit the third button where you can go onto your computer and select a picture that you've downloaded off the internet. We're not going to do that just yet. So I'm going to click on the first button, which is choose one from the library. I'm going to choose this baseball field. All right, so I have the stage set, um, but my cat is too big. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink him down. So um, these tools up here are kind of cool. The first one is to duplicate. Right. So if I click this and I click on the cat, well, now I have two cats. Right. Well, what if I made a mistake? I want to erase that second cat. I can use the scissor tool right here to click on the cat and he goes away. I can click on the third tool if I want to make him a giant cat. Or I can click on the fourth tool here, which is shrink, and I can shrink them down to a more reasonable size. So there we go. That looks good. I'm going to put him right here. And then I'm going to use the stamp tool to stamp him once, twice, three times. You can even click down here on your sprites four times. Okay. I'm going to put one cat here. I'm going to put one cat on second base and another cat on third base. And I'll put my fourth cat. Ooh, that's not my fourth cat. Okay, this is it over here. I'm going to put my last cat over here on home plate. Right. Um, and so now what do I want to do is maybe I want uh, the pitcher to throw a ball to the batter. And we can get this story started. Right. So um, I'm going to come here to my scripts. I'll go to events green flag clicked everything should start with the green flag because that's how programs are started in scratch um, you see these two up here this button here is to stop your program this button here is to run your program okay and when you click it what does it do it runs any blocks that you have connected under the green flag all right so for instance I can come over here to looks and say say something for two seconds right? if I double click it you can see that this sprite says hello for two seconds. Right? But if I go ahead and hit the green flag, I'm clicking it, I'm clicking it again, and I'm clicking it again, and my cat here is not saying hello for two seconds. Right? Why? Well, the reason why is because when you hit the green flag, it runs any code that's connected to the bottom of this when green flag click uh, uh, block. Right? But this is not connected. So I need to hold it, drag it over, and now it's connected. So I'll click it, and he says hello. 
Okay, for two seconds. Well, I don't want him to say hello. I want him to say, uh, I'm going to hit this ball out of the stadium. Right? So I'll go ahead and click that. And now I want the pitcher to respond, right? And the pitcher is a very proud pitcher, right? So he's going to respond very aggressively. So I'm going to grab my green flag, and you got to understand that all of your sprites, all the code should start with when green flag clicked. Okay. So I'm going to now go to looks, and I'm going to have him respond and say, try and hit this fast ball. So now I'm going to hit the green flag and see what, how my program runs. Click it, and now these two are having a very rude conversation. Why are they being rude? Because they're both talking over each other. Right? How does a conversation normally work? One person talks, and the other one listens. Then the other one talks, and the first uh, person listens. Right? And that's what we want to do with our program here. So I'm going to go back to my pitcher, and I want him to wait. Okay, and the way you're going to do that is you go to control, and the first block is wait, and I want him to wait before he talks. And now you want to say, how long do I want him to wait? Do I want him to wait for one second? Well, if I go back to my first cat, you can see here that he's talking for two seconds. Right? So for the pitcher to be a polite pitcher, he should wait for two seconds while the batter is talking. Okay. So now I'm going to hit the green flag. and You can see the pitcher waited before he talked. Right. So by using says and waits, you can have two people have an extended conversation with one another. All right. And now lastly, I want my ball. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on new sprite. The first one is choose from the library. And I'm going to try to find a ball. Let's see. Oh, here's a baseball. Great. So I'll double click that. Now I have a ball, but it is too big. So I'm going to click on my shrink tool again, and I'm going to take this down to a more reasonable size. Maybe that looks good. And I'm going to go to events, of course, green flag clicked, and I am going to say motion, go to. And go to means to go to where he is at currently right now, right? So if I put him over here and I hit the green flag, where's the ball gonna go? It's gonna go to where I placed him earlier. Right? You see that? Right? The ball, no matter where he is at the end of the program, will appear right next to the pitcher. All right. So now what is the ball gonna do? The ball after the pitcher talks is going to fly towards the batter. Okay, and so now we're looking at the pitcher, and he's waiting for two seconds. He's talking for two seconds. So together, that's four seconds. Right? And the baseball should wait for four seconds. So I'm going to grab the wait. I'm going to say wait for four seconds. And once you get to four seconds, I'm going to go to motion, and I'm going to say glide. Okay, but glide needs to know where to glide to. So I'm going to take this ball. I'm going to move him right over here to the batter, and that's where I want the ball to glide to. Okay, and you can see the X and Y change values, which means that the ball is going to glide to where he is now. Okay, so the ball starts at the pitcher's location, waits for four seconds for the conversation to be finished, and then glides to the batter. All right, let's go ahead and test that out. And see what happens. All right, great. And now the cat is going to hit the ball, and that ball is going to glide to here. Okay? And so we can do another glide over to there. Okay? But this glide should probably happen a little bit faster, so I'm going to put 0 0.1 seconds in, uh, 0 0.5 seconds instead of 1 second, and let's go ahead and see how that goes. All right, so looks good. And now when the ball gets to the edge of the screen, we probably want a sound effect, right? So right when the right when the cat hits the ball. And when does that happen? It happens right in between these two glides, right? The first glide glides from the pitcher to the batter. Then we hear, hear a sound and the ball goes off the screen. Okay. So in between these two, we want to put a sound. So we click on the sounds tab 
and we play the pop sound. Okay. And what is the pop sound? It's this. I'm going to double click on this block. Can you hear that? Okay. So I'm going to put that right there where the batter is going to hit the ball. And let's go ahead and see how that works. All right. So this is a program and one that we can build upon. And if you're feeling a little bit nervous and scared because of all the different blocks that I showed you how to use, don't worry about it. As we go through the CS First curriculum, the lessons on CS First, they're going to take you through these blocks, you know, one at a time, very uh, gently and easily. Okay. And then by the end of this module, you should be able to create something like I've created here. Hope you have fun.